Hi everyone, um, my name is Megan Williams. I did my quantitative research project on the return of sounds indicating, the return of bass sounds indicating an end of postoperative ileus. Is it time to cease this long standing nursing tradition by Robert L. Macy? So, um, what is postoperative ileus? Well, it is actually a form of gastrointestinal dysmotility. Um, it causes a buildup of gas and fluids in the GI tract lasting for about three to five days, which ultimately increases the hospital stay from, um, to seven to eight days on average. The symptoms including um, nausea, vomiting, abdominal distension, which could be very uh, traumatic for these patients right after abdominal surgery. Obviously, because of the hospital stay increase, it has added billions of dollars to the healthcare um, cost annually. Return of bowel sounds have always been an uh, indicator of resolution of POI, but it has also been proven unreliable. So the purpose of the study is to determine if there, the return of bowel sounds is an unreliable indicator of end of POI, postoperative ileus, and determine if the rocking chair intervention will decrease the duration of POI, and also is there a correlation between return of bowel sounds and passage of first flatus. Literature review used in the study was databases such as Medline, um, Scopus, and Sinhol, and also the snowball method was used because of the um, due to alterations in bowel motility that was first identified in 1890s, and then Cannon's um, auscultation for return of bowel sounds in 1905. There was 26 references in total in the study. Um, eight were journal were nursing journals, and 15 were medical, and then about three were OT PT journals. Some of the questions um, to be asked in the study is, is the rocking chair intervention um, effective in decreasing the duration of POI? Uh, is there actually an, a correlation between um, return of bowel sounds and passage of first flatus? Was there a significant difference between the rocking chair group and the non-rocking chair group? Some of the objectives that were outlined in the study included the primary aim, which was to examine all differences in the duration of POI, as indicated by the time passage of the first flatus in the in days of the two groups that were examined, the non-rocking and rocking. Um, secondary aim determined if there was a correlation between return of bowel sounds and also the passage of first flatus. There was no theoretical framework that was identified by the author, although the author did mention it was guided by previous evidence, um, but there was none that was actually uh, outlined on there. The design of this study was a two-group, the experimental control group, post-op only randomly assigned uh, study. It was post-op only because of the fact that the measurement for resolution of POI could only occur after abdominal surgery. The difference between these two groups, the non-rocking and rocking, is that non-rocking is a standard of care, including getting the, the patient up first post-operative day and sitting them in a chair and walking them and ambulating them. Now the rocking is, the only difference is obviously not sitting in the chair, but sitting in a rocking chair for 10 to 20 minute increments for about an hour each day on top of the standards of care. Research variables in this study include dependent variable, which was the duration of POI, the independent variable, which was the rocking chair intervention, and then the research variables, which also looked at the correlation between the return of bowel sounds and the passage of first flatus. So the sample size was 66 participants randomly assigned to either the experimental or control group, 34 in the experimental and 32 in the control. The setting was in the Southwestern Cancer Center in 2007. Inclusion criteria including English speaking, digestive, cancer that required abdominal surgery, um, cognitively intact, they needed to be able to ambulate from the chair to bed and vice versa. Um, and they were able to uh, have a PCA pump. Obviously, the include, exclusion criteria would be that they were not English speaking, did not have digestive cancer, did not, were not cognitively intact, were not able to ambulate or have a PCA pump. So the procedures, they had to start off by getting approval from the University of Texas, review, the Institutional Review Board. From there, they got informed consents from the participants from which they also randomly assigned them into the experimental control group. Once they were in the groups, they were assessed every morning by the primary investigator. Uh, the investigator assessed for bowel sounds in each quadrant, five minutes each quadrant, 20 minutes total, same time each day, same morning in the morning. Um, and they also reviewed the medical record and completed it every day, including the doctor's and nurse's notes. 
Data analysis only mentioned that all data was documented on a study data sheet by the primary investigator. Results included that they were not significant differences between the time of first um, bowel sounds between the non-rocking group and the rocking chair intervention group, but there was um, also no significant findings between with the correlation between time to first uh, flatus and return of bowel sounds. No association also with uh, the return of bowel sounds as an, end, as an indicator of the end of POI, which we did talk about earlier as unreliable. But um, down here on the chart, you can see that the rocking chair and non-rocking chair group were actually very close, um, showing that there was no significance. Limitations of the study were not actually identified by the author besides the need for further research. Um, the research did assess, did not also assess the demographics, including age, so the GI motility changes with age, which could affect the study, and also did not tell us the type of pain medications used by these participants, such as the type of pain medication used in the PCA pump, or types of medications in general that they are already on that could affect GI motility. Small sample size, I have that down because we did not have a power analysis, which did not determine if we did have need that this was a big enough sample size. Non-compliance with auscultation by the nurses, the most they listened to in each quadrant was about a minute. Um, they did not spend the full five minutes in each quadrant of the abdomen. Implications for nursing. Return of bowel sounds should be used with caution in nursing since it is unreliable. More reliable um, indicators would be passage of first uh, flatus and elimination of abdominal distension, nausea and vomiting, those symptoms. Um, intolerance of a diet. So in conclusion, there was no correlation between first flatus and return of bowel sounds. There was no significance between the rocking chair group and the non-rocking chair group, which actually is different from the other previous research that was done on rocking chair group. Return of bowel sounds should be used with caution in nursing because it's unreliable. And there should be a combination of assessments, such as looking at the elimination of um, the symptoms and also passage of first flatus. There does need to be need there does need to be a further research done on the passage of first flatus and elimination of the symptoms. Um, but that is it for my presentation. Thank you.